together for Jonathan Van Maren. So, so we've heard a lot of talk today about defunding abortion. As uh, some of the other speakers have mentioned, abortion is legal in Canada throughout all nine months of pregnancy for any reason or for no reason at all. And as more and more news comes out across Canada and from parliamentarians, we're finding out what some of those reasons actually are. Abortion is being used as a tool by misogynists to dismember pre-born children in the womb just because they're girls. Abortion is being used as eugenics to exterminate all those who are disabled, have Down syndrome, or are considered otherwise imperfect. And as the previous speaker mentioned, abortion is being used by people just to preserve their own lifestyle and just to preserve their own selfishness. This is nothing less than barbarism. And what I think we have to realize as well is that the vast majority of Canadians have no idea what abortion is, what abortion does, or what abortion looks like. Because if they actually knew what abortion was, they would not only refuse to pay for it, but they would refuse to tolerate it at all. And we at the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform are on the streets in Toronto and Calgary and other cities every single day, and we're discovering very rapidly that when Canadians are confronted with what abortion actually is, Canadians reject abortion because they had no idea what they were actually supporting and what they're actually currently paying for. As a number of the other speakers have pointed out, each and every one of us is complicit in the deaths of pre-born children by very virtue of being taxpaying Canadians. This is being forced on us. It's being forced on us by the politicians and people like the people across the street who claim that abortion is somehow health care. Now, the pro-choicers love to claim that pro-lifers are lying, and they love to say that what we say isn't true, that our stats are wrong, that our studies are wrong, and that our information is wrong. So what I thought I'd do for you just for a moment is take a look at what the abortionists and the abortion clinic workers themselves had to say about abortion and how they described the procedure. The following testimony was written by a, a late-term abortion assistant in a clinic run by a man named Dr. Haskell. Quote, the mother was six months pregnant. A doctor told her that the baby had Down syndrome, so she decided to have an abortion. Dr. Haskell brought the ultrasound in and hooked it up so that she could see the baby. On the ultrasound screen, I could see the heart beating. As Dr. Haskell watched the baby on the ultrasound screen, the baby's heartbeat was clearly visible. Dr. Haskell went in with forceps and grabbed the baby's legs and pulled the baby down into the birth canal. Then he delivered the baby's body and arms, everything but the head. The doctor kept the baby's head just inside the uterus. The baby's little fingers were clasping and unclasping, and his feet were kicking. Then the doctor st stuck a scissors into the back of his head, and the baby's jerked out in a flinch, a startled reaction, like a baby does when he thinks he might fall. The doctor opened the scissors, stuck a high-powered suction tube into the opening, and sucked the baby's brains out. Now the baby was completely limp. I was completely unprepared for what I was seeing. I almost threw up as I watched the doctor do these things. Most of Canadians are unprepared for what we're showing them, which is precisely why we're doing it. If you take a look at abortion in Canada, people are going to tell you that that description I just read to you is rare. Yes, that's true. It is rare. One of the reasons it's rare is that there is a complication to the abortion procedure known as live birth. Now, isn't it disgusting when you think about it? There are many doctors who use their entire training, all their skills, all their expertise to ensure that a pregnancy results in a live birth, and other doctors find live birth to be an annoying complication of a procedure that's supposed to end in the complete destruction of a human being. Now, recent statistics, as the previous speaker as well mentioned, have shown that between 2000 and 2009, 491 preborn Canadians were born as the result of abortion procedures and left out to die. So apparently we're no longer just funding abortion, we're also funding infanticide. We're not just paying doctors to kill babies. We're apparently also paying them to look the other way when babies are lying on hospital beds and dying in the very same beds that are supposed to be used for the care of people and for the healing of people. 
Apparently, abortion advocates think that freedom of conscience is the freedom to have no conscience at all. Now, the abortion advocates across the street usually respond to citations of late-term abortions and infanticide by saying, but you know what? Most abortions happen in the first trimester, if that, as if that was some sort of defense, and as if barbarism is permitted the younger the victim is. But just to humor them for a minute, why don't we take a look at what first trimester actually is, what first trimester abortion looks like. In a first trimester abortion, a suction aspirator is inserted into the uterus, and a vacuum suction is cranked up to the point where the limbs, the little arms and the little legs, are literally suctioned off of the baby. The suction eventually becomes so strong that this child is reduced to a bloody slurry and discarded like so much garbage. That's first trimester abortion, and that is not a defense of their position by any stretch of the imagination. Shame! 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 And also, don't let them tell you that late-term abortion is something that almost never happens. My colleague Stephanie Green debated a late-term abortionist named Dr. Fraser Fellows at Brock University about a month and a half ago. And when she described the late-term abortion procedure, he openly admitted that this was not only something he does, but this was something that was his specialty. He lives in London, Ontario, and works in London, Ontario, and he was completely unabashed even when we showed a video of what the procedure he specializes in looks like. Now, just for a moment, why don't we take a look at what that procedure looks like and what that procedure actually is. I'm going to read a quote from you from former abortionist Dr. Leventino. He is a man who used to commit these abortions before he converted. And here's how he described the procedure that Dr. Fellows of London, Ontario specializes in. Quote, you introduce this instrument blindly and start pulling off limbs. You feel yourself grabbing and pulling hard, and I do mean hard. And then out pops an arm. Follow that by a leg. Then you tear out the intestines, the spine, the heart, and the lungs. The difficult part of the procedure is the head, which is about the size of a plum. You know you did it right if you crush down and white material runs out of the cervix. That was the baby's head. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what our government endorses and forces us to pay for. Now, the people across the street like to call us extremists. They say that our position is extreme. Well, I don't know about you, but I refuse to apologize for saying that decapitating tiny human beings is barbarism. And I refuse to say, I refuse to apologize for pointing out that dismembering preborn baby girls because they're baby girls is nothing less than savagery. And I finally, I refuse to apologize for pointing out that the activity of crushing skulls is not the work of medicine, but the work of genocide. Thank you. Defund! Defund! Defund!